probably in 60. Well, for and I've been involved in the Middle East ever since, and so our oh, lives yeah. are just, you know, Whoa. that's why I thought you'd want to. Yeah. But listen, here's what we're going to do. Let's do your birthday first, because I'm doing a special on your birthday with All your right. friends are in it. And then what I don't do, finish, I thought you might write out for me and give it to Don. Maybe we can do that, because I sp Okay, right. talk about what stirs within you as you reach this birthday. Well, they don't come as a surprise anymore. I've had quite a few of them. This one will be the 36th anniversary of my 39th birthday. I like to think about it that way ever since Jack Benny yeah, I know. <laughs> cleared the way for all of us. But, uh, no, I don't really have any. No special memories of which birthday was the best for you and well, Trudy, no, I'm kind of, I'm kind of a happy fellow. It just seems to me that uh, uh, times keep on being uh, good all along the way. Are you sentimental about birthdays? Not too much, no. I really am not. Is there one birthday that you remember more than any other, or? Oh, or I've never. I don't give them that much thought. I haven't thought about it. Benny that gave much. me a good answer on birthday. Do you do you think you earned your? How do you think you earned your wrinkles? <laughs> That's what he said. Uh, well, I, uh, I guess uh, <laughs> uh, just with the things, I imagine that they've probably been earned more ever since I uh, I left show business and uh, got into this business that I'm in. Uh, Although I have to say, uh, uh, sometimes being under contract to a studio um, uh, could could add a few wrinkles. And has the presidency done anything for you on your birthday? Oh no, it hasn't made any change. I mean, are you are you you're very? It's very rare to we reach a milestone. So don't you have any sentimental or reflections no. on it? Uh, well, just I'm. I'm most grateful for all the blessings that have been mine. Did the attempt on your life make you appreciate life more? Oh, yes. No question about that. In what and, way? Uh, well, it just... Uh, well, when I heard afterward about, you know, at the time, I didn't even know I'd been shot. Afterward, when I began to read some of the doctor's statements about how close I was to not having any more birthdays. I decided that any time that I was sort of blessed with a miracle and any more time that I had, uh, I owed to someone else. Did it make you more religious? Yes. In what way? Well, it made me, as I say, believe that someone's hand was on my shoulder through all of that, and that's who I mean by someone else. Do you have the same enthusiasm for life that you did? Oh, yes. In what way? I mean, why, I just, 20 years ago, did you have the same enthusiasm <laughs> for life? Because well, it, that, is, that has seemed to, that seemed to grow. I, uh, yes, I do. I do love life and... Uh, I mean, the same as you did 20 years ago? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, you don't want to reflect on that? Well, what's isn't. your secret? Everyone's wondering you're so vigorous and <laughs> happy. And What's the secret to your sunny disposition? Well, I've, uh, I've always lived by, some, well, by a simple faith and by uh, some rules of conduct. I, I like people and uh, therefore I like what I'm doing. I appreciate very much this opportunity to to be of service. Why? Of, well, because someone much wiser than me once said, life begins when you begin to serve. And now I've had this opportunity to serve. And how have you followed that? Well, as I say, I'm, let's put it this way, I'm happy in my work. Do you, what one thing do you think you've done for humanity in your 75 years? Oh dear, I, I don't think I could answer that. I, uh, I just know that I want to keep on trying. If you had three wishes that could be fulfilled on your birthday, what would they be? Oh my goodness, they'd be the same things I pray for every day. Well, give me the three. Well, that I can continue to do this task that has been given me in such a way as to 
serve my Lord, and in doing that, serving my fellow man. And therefore, one wish would be to continue doing that as long as I'm assigned to this position, to bring the world closer to peace if I possibly can, and uh, I guess to continue the preservation that so many have contributed to of peace and freedom here in our own land. But are you more scared uh, about life since you got hurt and since you were back? No, no, I can say that that didn't happen. No, I just... Uh, you just go back. There's, there's someone else who I think has the say-so over my life and... Uh, You're really religious. Yes. Uh, but, but is there one thing that you want on this birthday that you never had before? I mean, are you missing anything in life? Well, <laughs> if I am, I'm too stupid <laughs> to know what it would be. No, I'm, I'm very happy. Do you want to say anything about birthdays on uh, Martin Luther King's birthday today? Because last night Jimmy Carter said he owed his presidency to J Martin Luther King. So if you want to get some men on the blacks and Martin Luther King's birthday, is well, there one group that helped you become president like he did? Well, uh, yes, and this morning I had a very heartwarming time. I went out to the school here in Washington that we have formed a partnership with. Mm -hmm. I, when I say we, I mean the White House. No. And where I have a pen pal and we regularly exchange letters and to speak to all those students and all that group in that school, the Martin Luther King yeah, Junior School. But but I, I'm so afraid of the timing, so I can get that from the transcript. But I mean, did some one group like Martin Luther King who helped Jimmy become president, help somebody help you in your life in the, to become president and, and uh, <coughs> one group or any? Well, Trudy, you know, the strange thing is I never set out to have a public I, office career. I, I was very happy in my work. Uh, I never was quite sure how I got talked into this, but I'm most grateful to whoever did because this, as I say, is maybe because it is service, uh, has uh, been the most exciting uh, and rewarding thing that I've ever done in my life. And when you say thank you, there I'm afraid your article wouldn't be long enough. I look back over my life and one of the things that helps me now with regard to doing things for others is when I can look back and see now how many places along the line someone gave me a hand, someone did something that opened another door for me. And uh, without people of that kind, and I'd just like to, I'd like to be a person of that kind also that is doing the same thing for others. I think you are. Let's turn to the Middle East and what we didn't finish, will you answer through Don? Sure. Because uh, I really right. want this to be a super birthday story on you. Right. I specialized in that. If you read my Hussein one, I gave him my Hussein yes. one to read a 50. Yes. Try to yes, read it and, and maybe we can do this through Don because, but Ed wants me to do Middle East. Why haven't you visited the Middle East as president? Don't take notes because you get me nervous. <laughs> We're taping it. <laughs> well, I'm not going to hurt the guy. Uh, I think it's just a case. Actually, I have let others more or less determine uh, the schedule and the limited ability you have to make trips and so forth and to receive uh, visitors here. But would you like to go to the Oh, yes, yeah. yes. There Will are places that I've got sort of on a list that before I'm through I want to do want to and want to go to. but. I think that I have to more or less rely on our diplomatic corps and all as to, uh, since you can't do everything at once, to set the schedule of, of where my trips but will be. But you're not afraid to go. Is it risky for you to go now? Well, I think it's risky for me to go down to the corner, but I'm not going to stop going down to the corner. But would you think of going to the Middle East Certainly. while you're president? Yes. Is it risky for Americans to go there now? Well, I think that in all fairness, uh, we in government must not hide from the American people and right now the spread of terror, ter terrorism and the fact that some of the uh, most maniacal of the terrorists have 
singled out the United States uh, as, a, as a target, that I have to say, I think all our people must be very careful until we can get a better handle on this terrorism. In 86, would you plan a trip to the Middle East and visit with the Arab countries? And I, don't think, I don't think that I can pick a time as to when, it, uh, when we would do it, but I've, I've never ruled it out. Gaddafi said he wants you to visit his tent. Would you, would you invite uh, him here, or would you consider ha uh, having a dialogue with him? You did so well with uh, Gorbachev. Would you consider a summit? I think uh, there'd have to be some great changes in Mr. Gaddafi for us to have a, a dialogue because of his continuing monologue. For instance, what would he have to do? Well, for one thing, uh, this dream that he has of a almost world revolution in which they would create a great uh, Islamic state uh, which he himself uh, indicates could only be done with extensive bloodshed and terrorism and assassinations and so forth. Uh, that, I think that that, uh, that isn't a dream, that's a nightmare. Do you have a lot of frustration in trying to take military action? Well, the frustration we have with all of the terrorist things is that to how to respond legitimately and without endangering uh, innocent people, to simply respond and commit a terrorist act of your own in response to one, that's not an answer to the problem. But if you, our problem has been one that, let's take the two great tragedies in, in Lebanon for our people, the bombing of our embassy and the number of deaths there, then the bombing of our Marines and that horrible you slaughter. You think they died in vain, the Marines? No, no, I don't. But I do know this, that, that in both of those cases, the perpetrators uh, were also destroyed. They was, those were suicide missions. So when you think of striking back, you have to think, but how can we find who was responsible? Who sent them? who talked these poor fanatics into giving up their lives in this way with a promise of a quick trip to paradise. And then when you, uh, these last two events, again, the perpetrators are either dead or wounded in, in hospitals in, and are prisoners now and should be prosecuted. But again, the establishing of the connection. And I think that we have uh, sufficient evidence that uh, this group did have the backing of Gaddafi and the support. And again, you can't just strike blindly at the Libyan people. So we'll, we're going to continue. I'm very proud of the fact that since this terrorist war began, uh, we have improved our intelligence to such an extent and our coordination with other countries that we have headed off and aborted 126 planned how can you uh, persuade your allies that the dilemma is different for them than it is for you, that they have to see your dilemma the way you see it? Well, it should be easy for them to see because uh, they are more a target as to the, these episodes, these incidents happening in their territory. Uh, there have been far fewer such episodes or uh, terrorist bombings and so forth in our own country. And uh, I can't help but think when we've seen on television uh, the precautions that have now been taken, the men carrying machine guns, submachine guns in the airports to protect innocent people and so forth. Do they want to go on that way? Is that how they foresee the years ahead of a constant armed guard of that kind every place where innocent people congregate? Or can we find a, an answer to isolating and then bringing some reason uh, to this and ending this terrorist threat. Is the key of the Palestinian homeland for as the root cause? Well, no, I don't think that that's the root cause. And I do believe this also, however, that as we've said for uh, to many times. To stopping terrorism, isn't the Palestinian homeland important? It, it is being used as an excuse by some for their own goals and their own aims. But we have said that in any peace negotiations, and we still are not retreating from our desire to bring about such negotiations, an Arab-Israeli peace. But that will have to deal with the problem 
of the Palestinians, those who have become refugees and are without a home. And you promised Hussein about the arms sales to Jordan. Are you gonna, how are you gonna follow up on that? I still think that this is a right thing to do. And this man has shown his sincerity and his desire to help bring about peace. And in so doing, he has incurred the enmity of some very uh, hostile and so forceful people. So he needs people. a partner now, so. And he needs, he needs this help. Now at the same time, uh, having endangered himself and his country, he must be able to say, in continuing his efforts, to his own people that he is prepared to protect them. And at the same time, we will not retreat from our pledge to Israel that we will never see them suffer a qualitative disadvantage. So I think that, uh, I think that this is absolutely essential if we are to have the trust and confidence of some of the the moderate Arabs who also want peace as we do. Can't you help Arafat sit down? I mean, if you talk with Arafat, or, and then he could help Hussein. No, we can't talk to him until he makes one change. Yeah, but he'll never do that. So you could make him moderate because you, you have great persuasive powers. <laughs> I um, don't think so. But don't, wouldn't you like to have that as your, as your biggest accomplishment of breaking this deadlock? This the oh, yes. yes but if but breaking, let him talk about the Palestinians. Yes, if, if breaking the deadlock. Yeah. Yeah. But in this particular case, uh, you talk about persuasion. Arafat knows what is keeping him from participating in the discussions. It is the fact that he refuses to acknowledge the right of Israel to exist as a nation. Now how can you then deal with someone and talk about peace between Israel and the Arab nations when he denies that Israel should even exist? So you don't think terrorism's root cause is a homeland for the Palestinians? No, I don't really. I think it is, it's giving a, a great excuse to some of these people who have their own goals and their own targets. So how can we stop terrorism in Gaddafi? Well, uh, I think that if more countries will join us in isolating him so that he realizes he is isolated from... And are you gonna help, are you gonna persuade them that it's a dilemma? Well, we've, we've made our beliefs known and we have a, a mission going forth now with the Secretary Whitehead. He's traveling to nine countries in 10 days. Thank you very okay, much. Let me, let me just fin end it with this. What is your policy in the Middle East? The policy in the Middle East? Yeah. You want me to talk about his peace plan. Is to, yeah, try and, is to try and bring about the same thing that happened between Egypt and Israel. To bring about a peace in which the Arab states, which heretofore have denied the right to exist of Israel, to bring those, and there are those who are moderate, such as King Hussein has proven, to bring them together with Israel and to have a settlement in which the peace is drawn instead of all of them having to live constantly with armed forces uh, ready at any moment for armed conflict to where like other countries and more, what is more common now in Europe and other places, they can have confidence that they have agreements with their neighbors and they can live peacefully together. And can the Soviet Union be in there too? You want them involved? Well, I think since the Soviet Union does not recognize Israel either, uh, okay. something would have to happen before they could. I think that the Soviet Union could take some steps and, uh, and that uh, might qualify them to be a participant in this. But your peace Thank plan's you, not President. dead, is it? Thank oh no, you, not dead okay. at all. Can I do the balance of this with him on the Middle East and then yeah. let him work on it? Because I wanted a, a thorough one on the Middle East. And your birthday one I'll do with Don a little. Is right. that okay? Sure. Maybe you could answer me. Because right. uh, yes. I got Mike Deaver and all those kind of people wanting me to do a special on your birthday and I really want to but it's hard to do it when you when when I can't hear you listen to you because I think I won't get the right things in <laughs> all right but I did good for you in the last ones and I'll send them in to Don okay, okay. you've got many more happy birthdays thank you very much you really look great thank you you fooled me on the palace living everyone's telling me that you don't agree that uh, you know that you really want the
maybe we'll do that. Uh, we'll give it 